Chapter 8 Now these are the words that Amulek preached unto the people who were in the land of Ammonihah, saying, I am Amulek. I am the son of Gadana, who was the son of Ishmael, who was a descendant of Amenadi, and it was that same Amenadi who interpreted the writing which was upon the wall of the temple, which was written by the finger of God. And Amenadi was a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, who was a descendant of Manasseh, who was the son of Joseph, who was sold into Egypt by the hands of his brethren. And behold, I am also a man of no small reputation among all those who know me, yea, and behold, I have many kindred and friends. And I have also acquired much riches by the hand of my industry. Nevertheless, after all this, I have never known much of the ways of the Lord, and his mysteries and marvelous power. I said I never had known much of these things, but behold, I mistake, for I have seen much of his mysteries and his miraculous power, yea, even in the preservation of the lives of this people. Nevertheless, I did harden my heart, for I was called many times, and I would not hear. Therefore, I knew concerning these things, yet I would not know. Therefore, I went on rebelling against God in the wickedness of my heart, even until the fourth day of this seventh month, which is in the tenth year of the reign of our judges. As I was journeying to see a very near kindred, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto me and said, Amulek, return to thine own house, for thou shalt feed a prophet of the Lord, yea, a holy man who is a chosen man of God, for he has fasted many days because of the sins of this people, and he is unhungered. And thou shalt receive him into thy house and feed him. And he shall bless thee and thy house, and the blessing of the Lord shall rest upon thee and thy house. And it came to pass that I obeyed the voice of the angel and returned towards my house. And as I was a-going thither, I found the man whom the angel said unto me, Thou shalt receive into thy house. And behold, it was this same man who has been speaking unto you concerning the things of God. And the angel said unto me, He is a holy man. Wherefore, I know he is a holy man, because it was said by an angel of God. And again, I know that the things whereof he hath testified are true. For behold, I say unto you that as the Lord liveth, even so he hath sent his angel to make these things manifest unto me, and this he has done while this Alma hath dwelt at my house. For behold, he hath blessed mine house, he hath blessed me, and my women, and my children, and my father, and my kinsfolks, yea, even all my kindred hath he blessed. And the blessing of the Lord hath rested upon us according to the words which he spake. And now when Amulek had spoken these words, the people began to be astonished, seeing there was more than one witness who testified of the things whereof they were accused, and also of the things which were to come, according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them. Nevertheless, there were some among them who thought to question them, that by their cunning devices they might catch them in their words, that they might find witness against them, that they might deliver them to the judges, that they might be judged according to the law, and that they might be slain or cast into prison, according to the crime which they could make appear or witness against them. Now it was those men who sought to destroy them, who were lawyers, who were hired or appointed by the people to administer the law at their times of trial, or at the trials of the crimes of the people before the judges. Now these lawyers were learned in all the arts and cunning of the people, and this was to enable them that they might be skillful in their profession. And it came to pass that they began to question Amulek, that thereby they might make him cross his words or contradict the words which he should speak. Now they knew not that Amulek could know of their design, but it came to pass, as they began to question him, he perceived their thoughts. And he said unto them, O ye wicked and perverse generation, ye lawyers and hypocrites, for ye are laying the foundations of the devil, for ye are laying traps and snares to catch the holy ones of God. Ye are laying plans to pervert the ways of the righteous, and to bring down the wrath of God upon your heads, even to the utter destruction of this people. Yea, well did Mosiah say, Who was our last king, 
when he was about to deliver up the kingdom, having no one to confer it upon, causing that this people should be governed by their own voices, yea, well did he say that if the time should come that the voice of this people should cause iniquity, that is, if the time should come that this people should fall into transgression, they would be ripe for destruction. And now I say unto you that well doth the Lord judge of your iniquities, well doth he cry unto this people by the voice of his angels, Repent ye, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yea, well doth he cry by the voice of his angels that I will come down among my people with equity and justice in my hands. Yea, and I say unto you that if it were not for the prayers of the righteous who are now in the land, that ye would even now be visited with utter destruction. Yet it would not be by flood, as were the people in the days of Noah, but it would be by famine, and by pestilence, and the sword. But it is by the prayers of the righteous that ye are spared. Now therefore, if ye will cast out the righteous from among you, then will not the Lord stay his hand, but in his fierce anger he will come out against you, then ye shall be smitten by famine, and by pestilence, and by the sword. And the time is soon at hand, except ye repent. And now it came to pass that the people were more angry with Amulek, and they cried out, saying, This man doth revile against our laws, which are just, and our wise lawyers whom we have selected. But Amulek stretched forth his hand, and cried the mightier unto them, saying, O ye wicked and perverse generation! Why hath Satan got such great hold upon your hearts? Why will ye yield yourselves unto him, that he may have power over you to blind your eyes, that ye will not understand the words which are spoken according to their truth? For behold, have I testified against your law? Ye do not understand. Ye say that I have spoken against your law, but I have not, but I have spoken in favor of your law, to your condemnation. And now behold, I say unto you that the foundation of the destruction of this people is beginning to be laid by the unrighteousness of your lawyers and your judges. And now it came to pass that when Amulek had spoken these words, the people cried out against him, Now we know that this man is a child of the devil. For he hath lied unto us, for he hath spoken against our law, and now he says that he has not spoken against it. And again he is reviled against our lawyers and our judges, etc. And it came to pass that the lawyers put it into their hearts that they should remember these things against him. And there was one among them whose name was Zeazrum. Now he was the foremost to accuse Amulek and Alma, he being one of the most expert among them, having much business to do among the people. Now the object of these lawyers was to get gain, and they get gain according to their employ. Now it was in the law of Mosiah that every man who was a judge of the law, or those who were appointed to be judges, should receive wages according to the time which they labored to judge those who were brought before them to be judged. Now if a man oweth another, and he would not pay that which he did owe, he was complained of to the judge, and the judge executed authority and sent forth officers that the man should be brought before him. And he judged the man according to the law and the evidences which were brought against him, and thus the man was compelled to pay that which he owed, or be striped, or be cast out from among the people as a thief and a robber. And the judge receiveth for his wages according to his time, a senine of gold for a day, or a senum of silver, which is equal to a senine of gold. And this is according to the law which was given. Now these are the names of the different pieces of their gold and of their silver according to their value, and the names are given by the Nephites. For they did not reckon after the manner of the Jews who were at Jerusalem, neither did they measure after the manner of the Jews, but they altered their reckoning and their measure according to the minds and the circumstances of the people, and every generation until the reign of the judges, they having been established by King Mosiah. Now the reckoning is thus, a senine of gold, a sean of gold, a shum of gold, and a lemna of gold. A senum of silver, an amnir of silver, an ezram of silver, and an auntie of silver. A senum of silver was equal to a senine of gold, and either for a measure of barley, and also for a measure of every kind of grain. 
now the amount of a cian of gold was twice the value of a cianine, and a shum of gold was twice the value of a cian, and a limna of gold was the value of them all, and an amnir of silver was as great as two cianums, and an ezram of silver was as great as four cianums, and an auntie was as great as all of them. Now this is the value of the lesser numbers of their reckoning. A shiblin is half of a senum, therefore, a shiblin for a half a measure of barley. And a shirlam is a half of a shiblin. And a leah is the half of a shirlam. Now an antion of gold is equal to three shiblins. Now this is their number according to their reckoning. Now it was for the sole purpose to get gain, because they received their wages according to their employ, therefore they did stir up the people to riotings and all manner of disturbances and wickedness, that they might have more employ, that they might get money according to the suits which were brought before them, therefore they did stir up the people against Alma and Amulek. And this Zeazrum began to question Amulek, saying, Will ye answer me a few questions which I shall ask you? Now Zeazrum was a man who was expert in the devices of the devil, that he might destroy that which was good. Therefore, he said unto Amulek, Will ye answer the questions which I shall put unto you? And Amulek said unto him, Yea, I will, if they be according to the Spirit of the Lord which is in me, for I shall say nothing which is contrary to the Spirit of the Lord. And Zeazrum said unto him, Behold, here are six aunties of silver, and all these will I give unto thee, if thou wilt deny the existence of a supreme being. Now Amulek said, O thou child of hell, why tempt ye me? Knowest thou that the righteous yieldeth to no such temptations? Believest thou that there is no God? I say unto you, Nay, thou knowest that there is a God, but thou lovest that lucre more than him. And now thou hast lied before God unto me, for thou saidest unto me, Behold, these six aunties, which are of great worth, I will give unto thee, when thou had it in thy heart to retain them from me. And it was only thy desires that I should deny the true and living God, that thou mightest have cause to destroy me. And now behold, for this great evil thou shalt have thy reward. And Zeazrum said unto him, Thou sayest there is a true and a living God? And Amulek said, Yea, there is a true and a living God. Now Zeazrum said, Is there more than one God? And he answereth, No. Now Zeazrum said unto him again, How knowest thou these things? And he said, An angel hath made them known unto me. And Zeazrum said again, Who is he that shall come? Is it the Son of God? And he said unto him, Yea. And Zeazrum said again, Shall he save his people in their sins? And Amulek answered and said unto him, I say unto you, He shall not, for it is impossible for him to deny his word. Now Zeazrum said unto the people, See that ye remember these things, for he said there is but one God, yet he said that the Son of God shall come, but he shall not save his people, as though he had authority to command God. Now Amulek said again unto him, Behold, thou hast lied, for thou sayest that I speak as though I had authority to command God, because I said he shall not save his people in their sins. And I say unto you again that he cannot save them in their sins, for I cannot deny his word. And he hath said that no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, how can ye be saved except ye inherit the kingdom of heaven? Therefore, ye cannot be saved in your sins. Now Zeazrum saith again unto him, Is the Son of God the very eternal Father? And Amulek said unto him, Yea, he is the very eternal Father of heaven and earth and all things which in them is. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And he shall come into the world to redeem his people, and he shall take upon him the transgressions of those who believe on his name, and these are they that shall have eternal life, and salvation cometh to none else. Therefore, the wicked remain as though there had been no redemption made, except it be the loosing of the bands of death. For behold, 
the day cometh that all shall rise from the dead, and stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Now there is a death which is called temporal death, and the death of Christ shall loose the bands of this temporal death, that all shall be raised from this temporal death, the spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form, both limb and joint shall be restored to its proper frame, even as we now are at this time. And we shall be brought to stand before God, knowing even as we know now, and have a bright recollection of all our guilt. Now this restoration shall come to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, both the wicked and the righteous. And even there shall not so much as a hair of their heads be lost, but all things shall be restored to its perfect frame, as it is now, or in the body, and shall be brought and be reigned before the bar of Christ the Son, and God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, which is one eternal God, to be judged according to their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Now behold, I have spoken unto you concerning the death of the mortal body, and also concerning the resurrection of the mortal body. I say unto you that this mortal body is raised to an immortal body, that is from death, even from the first death unto life, that they can die no more, their spirits uniting with their bodies, never to be divided, thus the whole becoming spiritual and immortal, that they can no more see corruption. Now when Amulek had finished these words, the people began again to be astonished, and also Zeezrom began to tremble. And thus ended the words of Amulek, or this is all that I have written.